uh, Sofia Hulten is uh, the artist is, uh, of the second exhibition on, on the season When Lines Are Time. Uh, we started with, with Ruben Grillo. Uh, he was dealing with some kind of uh, industrial production, the process behind the object and how, how the production of something can lead to an idea of time as well. How, how something is stopped or not stopped. And there are some links somehow with your with your work. Uh, I I do think that there's this this interesting duality with your work about that we, we can find uh, an, a sort of object based art sometimes, but also uh, you're working with 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 films. Mm -hmm. uh, and in both cases, uh, it's difficult to understand the limit between what's the object and what's the time in it. It's also a limit in physics. Yes. <laughs> in that the, they say now in quantum physics, there's the idea that matter is the same as movement, which is the same as energy. And that's something I find really interesting when thinking about sculpture. For example, if the thing I have, if my hand is at the same as the piece of metal next to me, which is the same as the fact of me moving it, that's, uh, it has a huge implication for sculpture. And that's how I started working with video as a form of sculpture. And then uh, what we can see is this, this time, but also this uh, incredible amount of possibilities of time. Mm -hmm. We have the bicycle, starting from one bicycle, but then there are possible movements. All of them are together. It's based on a, a scientific diagram of a chain reaction. So, and I think of it as if a bicycle is moving like this, but what if at some point reality split and there was a decision, oh, to go this way or to go this way, and then what if it split again? And there's the sci-fi idea of parallel realities which are uh, in infinite in number and maybe some are only very slightly different. So maybe in one reality, uh, your jacket is blue. It's, it's also interesting the way you, you observe reality. Like, you can see something on the streets and suddenly you modify this something. Mm. And this thing is here and we can read the narrative behind it. We can see that there has been something before written or drawn on, on, on this object and then you are modifying the construction, the structure of it, and suddenly it's your time here, it's the time before, it's we observing. Mm. And so all these possibilities are, are affecting not just your production, but also the, the way we receive the works. Of course, yeah, it involves the viewer um, in, in a different way. I was quite influenced by um, Raymond Carver's short stories in this to begin with because he wrote so that there was no beginning and no end. There was just middle. And I thought that was really interesting as a concept. And that's how I began to use objects which already have. A, they've had their beginning. I come in in the middle. And I don't leave an end. I don't have an end either, hopefully. It's also something I don't, I don't want to. I want for things to keep moving. And here, uh, in this keep moving, uh, yeah. during the installation of the exhibition, uh, suddenly you started producing a new piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it was, it, it was something I thought, oh, maybe we could do something on site. It's nice, it's interesting. Uh, there are pieces which already exist, and then it's nice to allow some elements of chance or randomness into the process. And in this piece, we have also this pattern, this movement, this thing that is moving, that it's, it's in process, that it's this time as well. It's very related to, this piece is all about time. Um, it's uh, based on, again, some sci-fi ideas and often uh, sci-fi authors talk about their work in terms of what if. So what if thinking is how you make sci-fi. Um, and I find that fascinating when, when thinking about making a sculpture. So I take a series of elements and I think, what if 
this, so it's something which I know, which I've seen. In this case, it's um, in a workshop, you cut the top off a bottle to use the plastic container to mix something. And then what if you were having a cup of coffee and when the cement was hard, you put the, the coffee on top? And then what if, as often I've seen in, in workshops, people are smoking and they have a, a bottle cap and they use that as an ashtray. But what if that was already in the container and then the cement poured on top? So it's taking a linear narrative and tying a knot in it, and making it uh, not hang together in the usual way. I'm talking about linear narrative, uh, trainees and one city. You, you are visiting uh, uh, a urban space following a path that is already decided and you know, there are people living shoes on the streets and you are changing these ones but the, 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 the movement, the, dec the decisions from other people are defining the way you move somehow in this, in this video. Yeah, the, yeah this, is, this is one part of it. In um, Trucking is the video, the name, which comes from um, Robert Crumb cartoon from the 70s, uh, Keep on Trucking with a guy walking and um, I, I, f I find pairs of trainers all the time in the street in Berlin. People just leave them. I think they buy a new pair and they just leave them in the street. Maybe they think somebody wants them. I don't know. It's something I noticed and I thought, ah, th there is something about objects which I find interesting, which, which comes back to this idea of equivalence, of the law of thermodynamics. Nothing is destroyed, nothing is lost, nothing is gained. We actually have an equilibrium. And I thought, I was thinking about leaving an equilibrium within the situation but changing something. So I swap my old trainers for a pair of trainers I find in the street. Then I carry on walking until I find another pair and then I swap those trainers for the new old and then I continue until I find another pair. And then when I've had enough, I swap my, I g again go back to where my trainers were and swap them for my found ones and leave. So it's as if if the, the found pieces are here, 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 and here, everything has made one, one movement. Then uh, this, this movement is also in the other video we're presenting in the exhibition. Uh, you are acting with some garbage, some objects that are not, uh, not are with us now. It's like we are, have decided this thing is not important, we are going to throw it. That gives you freedom. This was why I started working with these things, because I'm interested in obviously in the idea of freedom and uh, it, an idea to, to look at things which are in this in-between state we still, they still exist, but we don't, we've discarded them. It, it makes me free, some, some part it's a bit of free of associations, it's not representing too much, it's not saying, oh, you're talking about your, your mother or something, it, 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 we recognize it. But it's also that it, um, it means I can do what I like, I can play God. And then it disappears again. Well, yeah, the, the equilibrium remains, but again, something has changed, but it's a bit more undefined in this piece, uh, Altered Fates. It's a video where I find objects in a street container, take them out, very slightly change them, modify them. So sometimes, for example, there was a carpet which I found rolled up, and I just turn, unrolled it, turned it around, and then rolled it up again the other way around. 
or there were two buckets. One was full and one was empty. So I filled the empty one with the full one and then their positions were reversed. And then they go back. I like to, do, to think also about uh, functionality with your work. Like you are doing something, there's an action, mm. and uh, that goes kind of against the rules of the system. Like you have an object and, and you are disturbing its functionality. Like yeah. We have something to transport things. Yeah. You arrive, you, mo you move something, and yeah. then suddenly this object is something new, but it's still the same object. We can recognize an object, mm. but its function is over. It's to give it, it it's um, for tension. If, if I was working in this way with non-recognizable objects, then we don't feel, we feel it's a, oh, a simply, a, it's a sculpture, which is fine. But for me, I'm interested in when you feel that something is wrong. Uh, and that there is an in-between state. And this is why you need the, the, the functionality. It's like in sitcom, situation comedies. We need to have a very clear, defined setup so that we know when something crazy is happening. And it's the same way with me. Super. Let's hope that the visitors will come here and um they start this kind of dialogues with the objects, with materiality, but with time, with, with the performativity of, of your work and from your work, from everything. You can observe the world with this. What, what I hope, what I get, what I get, my feedback from people is that they, they go after seeing my stuff. And I don't know this because I live with this stuff all the time. My feedback is that people come and they say, when I left your show, all I saw were old shoes and bike frames and uh, it, it changes your eye, which is lovely. I'm pleased with that.